I wanted to work through a very important example for Physics 124. Uh, this is the case of a car traveling around a banked curve. So this is kind of a view of looking straight on at the car coming towards you. Uh, there's a coefficient of static friction, us, between the car and the surface. And the car is the distance of r from the center of the curve. And we want to know what the minimum speed is that the car can travel around the circle without slipping. Now the trick here is that uh, you, when we're considering the free body diagram, there's a few forces at work on the car. First thing is obviously, here's my point, there's always going to be weight, so there's going to be the car's mass times the gravitational acceleration. And then there's going to be a normal force here that's inclined at an angle uh, with respect to the surface. And finally, there's this coefficient of static friction. And there's kind of two choices we have for what's going on here. We can have the friction either pointed up the ramp, or we have the friction pointed down the ramp. And we don't know which of these two cases it's going to be. Uh, the key here is in the minimum speed that the car can travel around the circle without slipping. And in this case, the friction is going to help keep the car from falling down into the center of the uh, circle. And so we want to actually choose this as our friction force here and go ahead and get rid of uh, this, fric this uh, friction force leaving this as the free body diagram that we're going to analyze here in this problem. So clearing the text out of the way and setting up our free body diagram again, uh, we have our normal force, our friction force, and our weight here. Uh, the next thing to do in a Newton third law problem, Newton second law problem, is to draw a coordinate system. And for this problem, I'm going to pick this coordinate system, where x is pointing straight towards the center of the circle and y is going up. And the reason I want to do that is I know that the sum of the forces in the x direction here are going to have to be imbalanced to provide a centripetal acceleration. And there's going to be m times ac. And it's going to point straight in towards the center of the circle. A common mistake you can make on this problem is to say it's pointing down the ramp. But in this case, it's pointed in the direction that connects to the axis of rotation using the shortest distance. So that's straight in towards the center of the circle, not down. So that's why I've picked my coordinate system to be horizontal and vertical here, as opposed to along the ramp. I know that that centripetal acceleration also has to have a magnitude of mv squared uh, over r, or v squared over r is my centripetal acceleration, uh, times the mass. And that's going to be my sum of my forces in the x direction. I know that that car is not moving up or down the uh, ramp, so the sum of the forces in the y direction has to be 0, so it's not accelerating there. So I'm going to start things out with that and go ahead and sketch my coordinate system on my free body diagram. And I know that this angle here is theta. The reason I know that is I just think about what happens when this little angle here gets small. Then this normal force is going to come up and be balanced against the weight. Uh, so then I know that this angle here, theta, has to get small. So it's congruent to the theta drawn in the diagram. Uh, so given that, I can go ahead and write that as the theta there. And also, here's the tricky part, that friction force also provides a component in the vertical direction. And that theta is right there between the friction force and the horizontal. So for the sum of the forces in the y direction, I know that that's 0. And I know that that is equal to n cos theta. Uh, plus the static friction force sine theta, and then minus the mg is equal to 0. Uh, and then I know that the uh, static friction force here is going to be in the limiting case, because I want the minimum. So I'm going to know that fraction force uh, static is just coefficient of static friction, mu s, times the normal force. Okay. So I can take this and go ahead and substitute everything in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that mu s n into the friction force, and then I'm going to factor it out. n cos theta plus mu s sine theta minus mg equals 0. And I'm going to solve for the normal force here. Uh, the reason I'm going to do that is I know I'm going to get an expression over here. In fact, let's just put this on pause. Let's go ahead and solve uh, 
for, uh, let's go ahead and solve for the normal force here. Trust me, it's going to be a great idea. So n cos theta plus mu s sine theta. I'm going to push the mg to the other side, so that's just equal to mg. And then I'm going to uh, divide both sides by this term in brackets here. So I'm going to get that the normal force is mg over cos theta plus mu s sine theta. OK. Now, why did this all happen? Well, that comes from the sum of the forces in the x direction. And so if I break those down there, I know that that has to give me my mv squared over r, sum of, sum of the forces in the x direction. Looks like we got that normal force is pointing inwards. So that's in the plus x direction, n sine theta. And then I've got that uh, friction force pointing outward. And that's going to have a cos theta. And the outward means it's against the coordinate axis. So it picks up a negative sign, mu s uh, times n times cos theta. And you know, this one's sufficiently bad handwriting even for me that we're going to just do it better. There we go. Yep. Mu s n cos theta. And I know that that has to be my centripetal acceleration times the mass, mv squared over r. OK, so this is why we wanted to solve for the normal forces. Both of these terms on the right hand, left, left hand side, are the, I have the normal force. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. n times sine theta minus mu s cos theta is equal to m v squared over r. And then I'm going to go ahead and substitute in my value for n derived through hard work over here, which is going to be m, give me mg times the term in the top, sine theta minus mu s cos theta, cos theta, divided by cos theta plus mu s sine theta on the bottom. And that's going to be equal to m v squared over r. Whew, running out of room. So let's go to the, the home stretch here. We've got an expression here. And believe it or not, we were going after solving for this uh, speed v. That would be the minimum speed it would take to uh, stay in this situation. So all we have to do now is start solving for v. First thing I notice is that there's an m on both sides. So I'm going to cancel that out. Solution doesn't depend on the mass of the car. And I'm going to multiply both sides by r, which will cancel the one in the bottom. And uh, then I'll take a square root. So it gets rid of that r. Now we have uh, that v is equal to r times g sine theta minus mu s cos theta all over cos theta plus mu s sine theta. And wait, there's that radical. Take the square of the whole thing, and we get our answer. Yay. Wow. Pretty trippy, happy face. Anyways, I just want to note that what would happen if I asked for the maximum speed instead, max instead, is we would solve it the exact same way, except we'd have to set up our free body diagram a little different. We would have our weight still. We'd still have a normal force, except this time the friction force would be helping us keep uh, providing that centripetal acceleration. So it would be pointing in the same direction as the normal force. And you can do the exact same math, except the friction force is going in the opposite direction. In fact, you can go ahead and just change the answer here, because the math flows all the way through, except this minus sign becomes a plus, and this plus becomes a minus. And if you know those things, you can go ahead and solve it for the max speed uh, when everything comes through. That smiley face is scaring me.
There we are. Better. Okay, so this will allow you to solve both of the banked curve cases. Hope that was helpful.